Hello, and welcome to the Newcast. The Newcast is a series of interviews from amazing entrepreneurs who are doing their thing with topics on how they got started to where they're going and how you can learn from them. My name is Richard Hanley. I just quit the day job, launched a new food company, Hanley's Foods, and started up a blog where I try to document all my experiences and lessons learned. With that, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Hanley's Foods, Louisiana-inspired, natural, fresh foods. Uh, starting with their first product, Sensation Salad Dressing. For decades, you can only find this salad dressing in local restaurants, cookbooks, or in your mom's kitchen. Now, it's handcrafted and bottled right here in Louisiana with all natural ingredients, locally sourced when possible. And uh, portions of the proceeds go to 1% for the planet, which benefits Louisiana's coastline. And uh, it's, it's great. you got to try this stuff. You can pick up a bottle in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, hopefully coming to uh, New Orleans by June. And we're starting a uh, nationwide Kickstarter campaign in April. Uh, or you can order it online at HanleysFoods.com. And you can get up to 25% off your next order by entering the coupon code DUCAS at checkout. Uh, so we are looking for sponsors for this podcast. However, it needs to be something I can completely stand behind, not just pointless crap. So uh, if you don't have pointless crap and you'd like to get your website, product, or cause mentioned on the podcast, drop us a line at the DUCAS.net. And with that, I'd like to talk about, uh, I'd like to bring up our guest. Uh, spotting a trend is hard for any entrepreneur. Repeatedly capitalizing on the trend is even harder. Jared Lo Loftus founded Tiger District after LSU's 2003 SEC championship game. Uh, he brought the first food trucks, Taco de Paco and Ninja Snowballs to the area, launched the first co-working space for entrepreneurs in Baton Rouge, and he's the president and he's also the president of CATS, uh, Capital Area Transit System, puts together a free art gallery and raps on his free time. <laughs> I'm sitting down with him at uh, Louisiana Tech Park in Baton Rouge, the headquarters of College District, to talk about his journey, how he got started, and where he's going. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jared Loftus. This is where the round of applause, like you've got the background. Okay. <laughs> but I can edit it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, tell me, man, where'd, where'd you grow up? Um, when, uh, so I am, I am from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Um, grew up there. I uh, actually went to Southern Miss in Hattiesburg, and I, I moved to Baton Rouge uh, ra actually right before I graduated Southern Miss. Um, I moved here and then had to go back up there to graduate, but uh, moved here to open Tiger District, which was a brick-and-mortar retail store uh, right next to campus, across the street from the Chimes, and um, kind of had that idea in college where um, I, had <clears throat> I wanted to run for student body president uh, at Southern Miss. And to do that, I needed to raise some money uh, to run the campaign. And um, somebody suggested to sell T-shirts uh, for football games and whatnot. And um, one thing led to another. kind of um, had some success with that and uh, ended up on a road trip to a Notre Dame game. Uh, on the way there, stopped over at Purdue University to see a friend, and um, and there was a store there that kind of inspired me of like just they were doing new colors, different colors for Purdue, and 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 all different designs, and uh, they're doing it in a way that I thought was interesting, and in a way that I thought I could do as well, um, but um, you know with my own spin on it. You're right. It's a cool concept too. You can get the community or the people. Uh, submit their designs, the people vote on the designs, and the people buy the designs. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so, you just provide the service. Well, and, that was, and that's kind of come, that's come later. The, the, first, the first iteration of it was, uh, was really just me selling t-shirts. So I would, I would design them all. In the back of your car. Um, right. Wave them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then, uh, so I took that to the next level of actually having a store. Um, and, and I did all, in fact, the, the first store that I, the first uh, couple days of, of the store being open, um, we didn't even have, I didn't know anything about opening the store. It was That's very tough. difficult. I mean, I, big I, I got the, I got here in August. We didn't open until November. Um, you know, I had to just kind of put my blood, sweat, and tears, literally. I mean, I've got scars from building out the store um, into the store, and then we open and I didn't know how much merchandise it would take or anything like that. And so I designed a few shirts, basic shirts, 
and if you if anybody was paying attention it'd be like the same shirt on this wall and then on this other wall and then on the back wall just to fill out the Make store it look so like the whole store had like five different shirts in it so um, real quick before you settled on lsu what uh were you scouting other universities yeah, that you're looking at, at? Was uh, it because the championship well, I was, was coming at, i was looking at a radius about an eight hour eight hour radius around hattiesburg um looked at different markets and kind of analyzed them um there were several factors for baton rouge uh you know not just i mean this helped but they just won the national championship in uh you know in that january of 2004 um they uh but but above that the city size the student population uh all of those things like it's the only major university uh, our SEC school in Louisiana, there's, you know, Alabama's got two SEC schools. Mississippi has two SEC schools. Right. Uh, Texas has Texas and Texas A&M. And, you know, Louisiana just seemed, it, it felt like the, the market was right for what I was doing. Um, not to mention that location right next to school was available. Um, and you saw that before you decided to go to LSU? Um, that kind of sealed it up for me. Uh, in looking at other places, um, I ended up once I, this was the first place I looked, uh, I had, I did the market research on all of the other areas. Uh, but this was the first actual physical location that I went to. And after seeing that spot, I mean, it just, it all, it, it all made sense. And I didn't even, I didn't even fool with any other places and kind of put it all into here. I mean, looking back on it, very few regrets. Um, um, however, uh, there are some times where I wish I would have just gone straight to the internet. I kind of did it backwards, you know, where most guys go to the internet and then mm -hmm. a store. I did a store, then the internet. Um, I learned a, a lot from the store, though. Right, and that's, I mean, that's scary. Uh, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, going to an area that you've never been at. Oh, I didn't know, I mean, I didn't know anybody. I didn't, I didn't have family here. I didn't have friends here. It was a very difficult town for me to kind of get into. Like, I wasn't moving here yeah, with it's co-workers. Yeah, a very college town. Well, you it's know? a college town. It's a family. Like, you know, people grow up hanging out with the folks they hung out with in high school. Um, and so, uh, or in college. Or, so it was tough. You know, a lot of the people that, um, you know, some of my closest friends today here in Baton Rouge are, are people not from here. Um, just because it, the, you know that was a little difficult, um, but but I but it, I did. I mean, I learned a lot I, uh, from that process of opening the store and 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 figuring all of that out. I mean, I definitely got a lot of experience from that. Yeah, I would imagine. How how did you raise capital for that? Did you go out for investments? Do no, uh, I, I mean, didn't do any investments in the beginning. Um, I you know my um, my mom helped me out. I basically borrowed her money through the bank and I had a CD secured loan. Right. Um, and, and from there, um, from there, uh, just the, the success of the business, I was able to leverage that for some traditional financing from the bank, um, to expand in the, to expand the store, um, to start going onto the website, you know, start really focusing, not focusing, but getting into the internet space. Um, so when did you start seeing how that was going to be a, a better uh, medium for the company? That was 2007 was when we started really figuring that, uh, you know, putting that together. Um, you know, this is, we opened this up before Facebook, before Twitter. Um, you know, it's interesting seeing that, you know, having a business before that and then integrating that as opposed to, you know, the food trucks and stuff where it was a part, like that was a part of the business. So we couldn't okay. do food trucks without social media. Um, and so um, it, it, I don't know, it just, I felt like the scale of it, it didn't, it really hit me the beginning of 2008 when LSU won the national championship. And I kind of had the feeling of like, this is as good as it gets. And at that point, was that uh, was that your biggest your, that your was, biggest yeah, spike in that sales? Was the, that was the that was the peak. It's like it doesn't. Did you sell out? It, did you know how to prepare for that? How did you? Prepare I had for no idea like how that? to prepare for that. I mean, it was a great it was a great thing and a and a and a difficult thing at the same time because um, it wasn't just like clothes hangers everywhere and shirts no, on the ground. No, unfortunately, no. Some of that stuff I just showed you in the warehouse. Um, I, it's what I like to call my. $5,000 rack of mistakes that that 
small rack that I showed you with the stickers on it, the value of that is probably $5,000, which means retail value is close to $10,000 wow. of the merchandise that's sitting on that shelf still. So that's five grand I paid out and stuff that didn't sell. I bought way too many things, too many stickers, too much. Like the shirts sold, but... Um, so now you kind of got an algorithm of figuring nah, out... We're just still working on that algorithm. Right. I mean, it's different for every market and every season. You know, I had... I had this vision. I went. I started looking at other markets. My when I first opened the store, the goal was to open a store in Baton Rouge and then stores in multiple markets. And so, I guess it was 2006. Yeah, 2006. Texas won the national championship. I went to Austin. 2007, Florida won it. I went to Gainesville. Um, I like I was check because I was thinking about seeing the reaction. Open stores there, but I also got to see the reaction when I went to Florida. You know, I remember going to this one store, there was boxes everywhere, there was lines of people, like it was just wow. crazy. And so when it came to be our turn, that's when I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want to miss the boat. Like we got to have, I don't want to run out of stuff. And plus my sales reps were like, oh, you got to make sure to have this. And I was kind of leaning on them to, to tell me what, what I needed. And, and we just overbought, plain and simple. And so what should have been a very profitable, very good thing. For the 2007 champion? Yeah, for the national, 2007 national championship. Right. So January 2008. Just had too much stuff, um, and so um, that so that hurt. What should have been very good ended up all the money I made. I had to sink into all this merchandise that didn't sell, and so I learned a lot from that. And it, and that's kind of what set it off of like, all right, well, this is as good as it gets. Like I can't. All you can do is continue. To, there's nothing better for a university than winning the national championship. That's the biggest it gets. And so you have to continue to win them. And you can't, at the time, I was like, oh, you can't win one every year. Alabama's kind of disproven that a little bit. But but even then, when you do win it every year, the sales kind of trickle down because... They just want it. Yeah, you just want it. It's like, not, it's not as exciting great as it was before. No, it's not exciting. Like, I would imagine that when LSU won the national championship in 2003... It'd been, you know, 45 years. That was a big that deal. Was a big deal. In 2007, it was still a big deal, but not as quite big. as big of a deal as 2003. Just like this year for Alabama wasn't as big as the last year. Right. So, so, uh, so that as much science goes into it, there's still a lot of emotion and feeling that has to be gauged of where the fans are. How are they reacting to it? Is this a... You know, had Notre Dame won the national championship this year, it would have been massive. Right. It would have been huge. It's been forever for them, you know. And so uh, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, that, so it, that's when it started. I started looking at the landscape differently. That's when I, st- I shifted my focus from opening new stores to opening websites and, and looking at other markets. Because um, the idea was there's always a winner. There's always going to be a, a winner. Anymore. And so if I can spread it wide enough, then we'll, you know, so for the past several years, we've always had, uh, we were always carrying merchandise for the national champions, um, which was good. But, um, you know, we need to, uh, had Notre Dame won, I'd be out of luck because we, we don't have a Notre Dame site right now. Right. So now, now you're seeing the transition of it getting to be online. When, did, when was that point where you're like, all right, this brick and mortar store was great. Let's, uh, you know, let's focus. Let's. That that that's a big step. Like you said, it's normal to go from online than physical store. You went the opposite way, but you closed up the the brick and mortar yeah, store. Yes, so right? two two thousand ten. It was. Uh, it came down to it, and uh, I actually um, was starting to think about like, hey, I, if I'm going to really do the internet, I need to focus on it, and it. And I need to put all of my effort there as opposed to kind of serving two masters here. And um, ended up having a conversation with a vendor of mine uh, that was interested in getting into the retail space. And so uh, I was able to kind of transition out and I kind of sold him the store portion, if you will. Um, so he didn't buy the name. Was that Josh? Uh, no, this is, uh, this is a, a, a guy named Eric Hedrick um, that bought the store. Uh, probably kind of just bought the space, if you will. Uh, didn't buy Tiger District or TigerDistrict.com, so he didn't buy right. the rights to the name. The property. Um, and basically, I, I kind of, you know, that, that spot was vacant for a while. It was vacant. Uh, all the other places were vacant while I was there. So we kind of 
built it up as a location for LSU merchandise, um, and then essentially, uh, you know, figured out a way to uh, value that. And he 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 bought that, and I was able to go straight to the internet and 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 focus on the internet. And um, a lot of people usually think like, oh, you oh you must have been making a ton of money on the internet. That's why you 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 stopped doing the store and it was actually quite the opposite. I mean the store hmm. was the cash cow. The store was the one that was making the money. And I had to but but I knew its capacity, you know, what it it could do as opposed to what the internet could do. How and can I, you scale it, you know? Yeah. yeah which the, which could just, scale. I knew I wouldn't be able to take that uh make that happen on the internet as long as I was focusing on the store. Right. So, yeah, I mean, with an internet site, once you have, you know, over the years go, you're perfecting, building on it, making it greater, and then if you want to get it to Notre Dame, it's a much easier transition than right. doing that with the physical Well, I mean, place. we've got it now where we can pretty much flip a switch and... Um, I saw and you have... I read somewhere you have, like, 250 domains registered, huh? Yeah, I've got 250 <laughs> domains. So we've got Fighting Irish District and every yeah. other district you can imagine. It's just a matter of being at the point where we can start putting merchandise on the site and 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 going from there so right so you reserve the domain right how did you uh begin to market because like you said with the brick and mortar place it's right outside campus a lot of people are passing by a lot of heavy volume traffic so it's like it's known to have a present there presence there where people know there's a place to buy shirts so now you're transitioning online what? How did you? How, how did people know to go find you online? Did you throw out flyers? Well, I mean, they didn't at first. Tailgating. I mean, we do we, we do a lot of our um, a lot of our marketing is online. Um, it's all online now. I mean, I when I had the store, I tried everything, and then I got to the internet, and it was like this holy grail of of tracking and measuring that I couldn't do in the store. Now yeah. it was like 2010. Twitter, Facebook's really started. Right. To so, take fa off. Fa I mean, when I saw I saw Facebook in early 2005, when it was still, you had to have a .edu address. Mm -hmm. In fact, I actually I was living with a guy that was a master's student. Um, he was a grad student at LSU, and um, he did he thought Facebook was stupid, and so he let me use his email address to log on and and get an account. Uh, because Southern Miss didn't have it yet, and I mean, as soon as I saw it, it, it just, I don't know, it just felt like, hey, this is, this is something that I don't know how, you know, I actually got kicked off of Facebook a couple of times from doing a, a, a commercial business as a personal page. So you already saw the potential of what oh, it could do no for business. Oh, no doubt, no right. doubt, and so, uh, so yeah, when it got to the internet, it was all, all stuff that we could track. So I didn't like newspaper or radio or TV or billboards or whatever it was. Not to knock any of those, but for me, I wanted to track it. Go where they are. On uh, the right. And so, um, you know, there's the temptation of like, oh, well, you know, look at all these people at the football game. Like, how do you reach them and this? I mean, on one hand, LSU is very particular about like not doing commercial endeavors on campus. So they're pretty... Um, adamant about that. And with you in that program. Especially in my line of work because like we're directly competing with some of the places that are on campus. Right. Um, so it's not like we'd, we'd get in trouble if we went and hand out fly flyers and I just felt like there was more, there was a better use of our time if we just spent it online and so through Facebook and, and just measuring that and just refining it. I mean we're still today um, making that a better process of, mm. I mean we very heavily track every single link that we put out on Facebook so that I know that, you know. What do you do for tracking? Like use Bitly and just kind of see who's clicking on it and where they're at? So we use this thing called Google URL Builder, which okay. allows you to put in all of these parameters. And, um, I mean, every link that we put on Facebook is an individualized Google URL that we've shortened. We have a vanity URL that's like dstr.tc, kind of looks like district. Right. Um, and uh, and and that way I can track. I mean, I I you know I we've tried different combinations of of you know text and link and images and what people click on. And sometimes the image says, "Hey, click here." Sometimes it says in the text, "Click here." Just tracking what those things, how those things do. Constantly measuring it, tweaking it, yeah, refining it. Right, and making sure there's a conversion. You know, we had this 
we all saw this thing, you know, when you can do, um, you can do a milestone on Facebook. So like you, when you go to do your update, you can say whether it's like an event, a milestone or something. Yeah, photo. Um, so we did it as a milestone and got great visibility. So it, it shows up better in feeds and like we would do a milestone when LSU would win a game or any team would win a game. And so we'd only do them like once a week or so. And the visibility, like the people see this number, that went up. However, the link that was in that was very rarely clicked because of the way that it displayed. It displayed the image more so than it did it the text predominant. and the caption, and so you and so people weren't clicking. So as cool as it was that we had the traction, it didn't convert. And at right. the end of the day, if it doesn't sell T-shirts for us, it's not working. It's not worth it. So, um, so it, it, you know, com always refining, always mm -hmm. you know, getting in there and 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 figuring out what we what we need to do, how we do it better. And, um, you know, just because it worked last week doesn't mean it's going to work this week. Yeah, constantly pivoting and making it better. Uh, so you saw that the, the photo wasn't working. Do you put in the, it's curious, do you put in the, uh, just the text link? Is it just, you just, you get better results, better conversions just by putting uh, a little paragraph with the link itself and no photo? Our best, our best combination is text, link, photo, all three. Huh. So a caption, a link, and a photo All right. is what we find shows up the best in feeds. Okay. And then, so as far as advertising, you say, do uh, you do like the sponsor ads or is it we typically, typical with like we've AdWords? Done, we've or? done all of them, but we've, we, I mean, 90% of our ad spend is on Facebook. And I'd say that we, uh, we were doing the right hand ads. Uh, they've gotten better with their promoted posts, so we mainly do the promoted post. But promoted posts are only as good as the traction that you get. And so, I mean, we were driving costs down to ten to fifteen cents per like when we were when, especially during very effective during football season. But yeah. what we do is is it's by nature people enjoy that stuff during football season. You know, of your team's winning and that kind of thing. And um. You'd be surprised at what you get when you just ask people to do what you want them to. Mm -hmm. Ask them to like this post, or share. share this post, comment on this post, and that drives your traction up. So the more your transaction, the the cost per like goes down on the promoted post side because it's being seen by more people. And we'll right. have posts that friends get, of friends. Yeah, I mean we'll get posts that end up being seen. You know, as the you know blank number of people have seen this will be a couple hundred thousand people. Wow. And so it, it you know, there's a lot a lot of power there. That is. Yeah. I, there is one thing that I tested, uh, where I always it was uh St. Patrick's Day promotion and it was for the salad dressing company. And uh it was share this, which I actually I think hope Facebook's not listening to this, I'm sure they're not. <laughs> I think it was against their terms of service I read afterwards, but uh so I said you know, lucky you, something like that. Here's your chance to win two bottles of salad dressing. Share this for your chance to win. And that is against their. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've I've learned that the hard way, but there's you have to like use a specific service if you're gonna do that. Right. And I have done it other ways. That, that, that was the first time I done it that way. And you know, we have like a hundred and we had like 150 likes or 160 likes at the time. Nothing much. Very small. And I think the most viewed post was like maybe two or three hundred people or something like that. Mm. I did that. We had about 5,000 views. Yeah. You know, so it's just the, and again, it was, I, I could have maybe said something like, you know, share this photo or something kind of like what you said, but it was the most shared asset that we had. And it was, you know, just by friends of friends of friends sharing yeah. it, it got a, more exposure than any ad I've ever ran. Yeah. So the viability of that is great, yeah. And all you had to do is ask people. Right. And then you had the cost of shipping out and sending two two bottles of, of dressing. Right. So, I mean, sometimes it's it's it doesn't have to be difficult, you know. It's just a matter of figuring out what works and then doing it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Measuring it. People think, oh, you know, I've got people, you know, think that it must just be so easy for us with, you know, like our Roll Tide District page has... I don't know, 46,000 fans on it. Uh, you know, it must be like shooting fish in a barrel, and it's not. I mean, we have to continually work on that, continually push that. So do you just have a team in every location that knows the language and the lingo, How, or do you just kind of 
have a, a group that kind of is uh, always seeing what's in the trends and seeing what's happening. How do you find ways to socially interact with those districts? I mean, you're looking at the team right now. <laughs> um, we've, I've got somebody that comes in. We've gone through quite the transition of uh, of sorts for um, for 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 right now. Um, you know, we're very seasonal business, but um, it, there's some nuances that you figure out as you go. Like how we interact with the Alabama fans is different than how we interact with LSU fans or Michigan fans or Florida fans, and so um, so on one hand. You have to treat them all separately. On the other, it, it it it's all college football or it's all college sports, and so there's certain things that you can say or do, and um, you kind of learn the lingo as you go. Right. You look, the comments that people leave. I bet the comments y'all get. <laughs> I mean, you have to be wait, careful the not sport industry is a, is a people talk a lot of trash and I can imagine oh, college. Oh, they do. Well, you, you have to let a lot of this stuff go. You have to realize that sometimes you get people that aren't your target demographic on your Facebook page. You know, one big discussion we've had during football season um, where we'll post a shirt and people will be like, oh, you know, that's stupid or I don't like that or whatever. But then at the same time, we'll have like a thousand likes and 500 shares. And then conversions on that. And so like, well, people well, do. Let, so let them vote with their dollars. Yeah, right, exactly. People are always going to talk there's always going to be haters, right. always. I've not, I've yet to do one thing where there weren't haters involved, always. Even in, even in the taco business, it doesn't matter. Food trucks, social media, co-working space, public community service. It's all. It, there's always haters. Right. Somebody always thinks they can do it better. You you know you're not doing it the right. Whatever. And you just have to get over that. And have have the if you're going to go into business for yourself, you got to know that somebody else is going to be coming at you at some point, and and you've got to be comfortable with what you're doing and how you're doing it. Your strategy, you have your ways. Exactly. So, tell me back with the uh, with the food truck. What uh, I like me personally, I have a food truck idea myself too. So I'm very interested to see, uh, you know, what. What what idea struck you for that to start the food truck? Talk to um, I think it was a combination of things. I was a little bored. I'll be honest. This is like an around... This is around 2009. Okay, so you right before you sold the store at yeah. uh, Tiger it, District. It was... Um, um, if you look back on my business career thus far, um, there, you know, the business is seasonal. So it comes up in football season and then around end of January, February, it starts coming down. And so that window of like February to June, I would get a little antsy because I've just gone from working, you know, all day, every day, nose to the grind, just like boom, 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 to things ease up. And so now that things ease up, I would kid myself and feel like, oh, well, I've got free time. And so I would watch, uh, I got this weekly email called Springwise, dot com um and it's like trends it yeah it's basically a trend uh, an entrepreneurial trend finder for around the world and so uh i'd been looking at twitter uh, i guess i was on twitter at this point i forget when i got on like late 2008 maybe two th- early 2009 um food trucks were starting to pop up koi was around in la uh starting to be more in new york um, Spring Lives was starting to showcase them on a regular basis, and uh, I was with a, uh, a group of, I was with Josh Ford and um, uh, another, uh, actually a, a girl that worked with me, Emily Bergeron, uh, you know, we all kind of had these separate ideas of, I like the idea of food trucks, like mobile business, having been in the brick and mortar space, I loved the idea of going to the people as opposed to being in one spot and waiting for the people to come to you. Right. Um, Emily always talked about how there weren't any good snowball stands near campus. She's a good New Orleans girl where, you know, um, New or- snowballs are a part of the culture. And, um, and, and we were all together with Josh, and I'd been at some business thing together with him, and, uh, and just the idea came out, and I was like, well, let's, you know, let's, let's do a snowball stand. Let's figure out a way to do a snowball stand. We do it near campus. Like, there's not any good ones nearby. And, 
And and my thing, I was kind of like, well, the only way I'll do it, I'd be involved if it's cool and different, or if there's something, there's the food something truck to wasn't it. There yet, there's it something was just, to y'all it. wanted to find a cool way to bring snowballs. And to I kind of threw out the idea of like, hey, I know it's kind of crazy, but let's do, let's try to make it mobile, and and you know, people have to find us on Facebook and Twitter, and um, and this at this point, it was kind of that was crazy talk. I mean, you know, we didn't even. Whether people are even using Twitter and Baton Rouge, like, would it work? And people are like, well, how do we find you? Like, how do I know where you're going to be? Right. How do grandmothers know how to take their grandkids where you're going to be? Like, they're not on Twitter. And it's like, well, grandmothers may not be our customers, you know? And um, so we did it. Um, found us. Did you, did you get a, how did you raise capital? How did you find the truck? It was just a few, the three of us put some money in together. We found a snowball stand one of those mobile snowball stands it was actually a trailer um out of mississippi um we've done so much business on craigslist it's like a gold mine of of resources i mean all of our food truck endeavors have been bought through uh, through craigslist um and so anyway we we went bought that stand we did it that first summer um got a lot of uh it got great traction um people seem to enjoy it uh, the next was so, this the trailer or this this wasn't the truck yet. This was that was two thousand nine, and so um, so then the next year uh, it was like man this the the trailer was cool but when you have a trailer you have to have two parking spots right. and we painted it black because it was supposed to be like ninja and that was a bad move having a a, a black vehicle in summer, oh, yeah. um, and so uh, so then from there. I uh, ended up going on Craigslist the next year and say, like, all right, let's finding a truck was difficult for what we wanted. I didn't need a food truck with a full out kitchen. Mm-hmm. And so, for snowballs. Um, so we we're like, well, we're just going to build this thing ourselves. And I'd, uh, you know, so when I say I, there's this trend of like me getting uh, kind of antsy in the springtime, I've actually, uh, I've gone through a couple of remodels house remodels during those times as well mm-hmm. um, the house. in 2006 and in 2008 uh, remodeled two houses and uh and so i felt like i had the skills that uh, that were needed to be able to build this thing out uh found a uh found an old postal service truck out of alabama uh drove up there brought it back down here and then retrofitted it i mean i i think i even have a youtube video out there somewhere of where I literally am like cutting, stripping it down, cutting a hole in the side. Like, n- there are few things more permanent than cutting a hole in, in the a side of a vehicle. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, we just figured it out. I mean, literally just cut a hole and went and found a guy that makes windows and off of Choctaw in North Baton Rouge. And that's insane. Um, you know, custom did this window and um, put the plumbing in. Found a electrician on Craigslist. Put the electrical in and. Mm. And made it work. Was this for the snowball? This is for snowballs. Okay. So that so, happened, and then um, a, 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 a guy approached me about. And uh, how's that? How's that doing with uh, social networks? Is Twitter picking up? Are you starting to see the trend of how powerful a food truck can be with? Uh, oh yeah, Twitter? I mean, well, food trucks wouldn't be possible without social media. Not in Baton Rouge, I don't think. I mean, it would be difficult because we have to move around. I mean, in some places where you have fixed lots of just food trucks, and people come there like a food court. Um, Maybe you could get away with it, but you know we don't have it's the not a density. Business, right? Yeah, well, we don't have the density here of right. where like large populations of people, so we have to move around. So you have to tell people where you are, and you have to have that method to be able to get that message out every day. Um, I, I think it'd be difficult if we were having to, like fax out our location, you know. Mm. So, uh, uh, so we definitely are they even s- still around? Y'all even have a fax machine here? Who does that? I don't. <laughs> I hate faxes. I, it's all. I, I, we you have just a take fax a photo with your iPhone and right. you're done. The IRS only communicates via fax, I've found that's, out. That's crazy. Unfortunately. I guess I, I'm backed up. I, I'm, you, my sister's a CPA. We're going to Dallas Well, this they only week, communicate so. in fax when things are in a... In not, when things are bad. Good, yeah. So it's are, bad when they went through fax number. <laughs> right. So if I don't have a fax number, I should be good, right? They'll never find me. Uh, it works <laughs> that way, but something like that. Something like that. But yeah, so the, the truck, um, that was Snowballs. That also was allowed us to test out the market. Will people buy food off of a truck? Will they follow us on Twitter and Facebook? Um, you know, can we get engagement? And we did. And then took that. Okay, well, let the next step was 
a food truck, something year long, higher priced. I mean, these snowballs are dollar fifty, two dollars, and so it's like, well, how do we do a meal? Yeah, yeah. And um, so we knew that 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 could work, and uh, and then leverage that into Taco de Paco. And I have to say, I absolutely love the concepts. Uh, Y'all have this concept of yeah, Taco de Paco. You know, it's lunchtime amigos. Y'all have the, I, I love y'all's updates on, well, I, I see them on Facebook. Uh, you know, Ninja Snowballs, I, I can't even think of a line that y'all use, but y'all have, y'all have these themes and everything's developed around a theme. There's so definitely everything's a language, fun. like a voice. There's a, right, a voice per each, uh, each venture or, or truck. Uh, so yeah, so now, with Taco de Paco, did you go out on Craigslist and found that cut truck up on, another found, postal truck? Found that truck on Craigslist, ready to go, actually, out of New Orleans. A guy that had a um, that bought a truck out of New York after Katrina, um, and that was like he had lost his job, and that was his way of uh, making money. Um, then got a job uh, and was selling the truck. Um, we ended up having to paint it and and brand it, but other than that, it was ready bright to go. orange too. Yeah. Great color. We kind of have some. Th- I'm more on the marketing and branding end, um, and that I don't know. I just kind of see it. Like I just always saw that as an orange truck, and yeah. um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of alliteration or rhyming, and so um, I mean that that was a fun lunch meeting when we came up with the the name Taco de Paco. Yeah. So, how, how how did y'all how did y'all come up with that name? I've got my minor in Spanish. And so I'm pretty, I'm pretty familiar with it. I went and lived in Spain for a summer um, and visited a couple of times and um, uh, familiar with the Latin American culture. And um, I, don't, I don't remember. I'm trying to remember some of the other. I wish, I think we may, we have that around somewhere of like this pa- piece of paper where we're like sketching it out. And um, I, I, I know Taco too. de Paco. You have the trucks drawn out and what it's going to look like. I liked Paco. I uh, I liked the name Paco and it rhymed with taco and it's like tacos, <laughs> yeah. Paco's tacos. That th- I think that may have been like Paco's tacos and I was like, first. how do we make it a little bit more, you know, let's do Taco de Paco and uh, people butcher the name all the time but I think that's part of the fun part. It you is. Know, so where's yeah, your and has a great loco upside down. Taco Paco, like, you know, so... And it has a poncho hat for the logo, so yeah. it all really ties in. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, then did you, because it's great. I, I mean, I've been to the Dat Fu. And, Dat Fu is my favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's some great stuff. So not it only, is, I, I mean, can't it's, take credit it, it on hits, the food, though. That's, it hits that's every the... level, though. It hits, you know, the marketing, the branding, the the theming, it, and then the food. It's you got to have a great product. I mean, I, I think in everything that we do, I, I'm assuming what is that the a the product day? is good. You know, like right. at, at the end of the day, you're, you know, the salad dressing, like you can have a cool label, you can have a cool bottle. They gotta buy you may again, be able to, though. You may be able to buy one, but unless it's a good product, you're only gonna get that one sale. And everybody, right. in, anybody on the consumer business, you're not making money off of one off sales. Like you need repeat customers, right. you need them buying back, coming back for more. And, um, and so I think that's a testament of it always, like, I, I'm always super excited when people are like, oh, I love your tacos. Like, I eat them all the time because it's just, like, it's so crazy to me. I, I think, like, I, sometimes I forget what tacos? time it is, and I check on a Facebook uh, to go measure something, you know, analytics, and I'll see Taco de Paco up there. I'm like, oh, they're going that. I'm going to be over there. That, right. I'm going to be around the, uh, you know, Segan area around that time. I'm going to swing by. <laughs> yep, yep. You well, know, we appreciate that. It's great because it, I, I like it because, you know, it, it moves around so it has a location where you can just kind of float around. And, uh, yeah, you'll just see it on the feed. Y'all, you know, have the perfect time to post it, lunchtime. Uh, and so that way, you know, people do – you, where do you find locations? Do you just uh, – Park downtown. Do you have to get permits? Do you? Because I've seen that y'all y'all gone to, to have hospitals. A, you and, have to have a permit for the business, but then like we just have to have permission for places that are private property. Downtown is public. And it's a public spot, so we're good. Um, everywhere else, like people ask us to come out there, you know. And so, so you have like a waiting list of your next locations. You ever find a dry spell of you don't know where to park the truck this today? No, not maybe in the beginning, not as much anymore. But now it's kind of we have to balance out versus people, you know, people that want us to come there versus is it going to be a profitable day? You know, cause some people are like, oh, my office loves you. Like you have to come park at our office, and it's like an office of ten people, yeah. and that doesn't satisfy lunch. And so. You know, is that office of 10 people around 10 more offices of 10 people? You know, um, is it a big office complex? Are there 
lots of building is it a busy intersection these are all the kind so of things factors. that we we try to factor out because baton rouge isn't big enough for you to go downtown every day and that be uh that be big enough for you you know so you gotta you gotta get around you gotta move around and, and find multiple locations so do you still have uh Bo both the trucks running right now, or is the we actually so we don't own Ninja Snowballs anymore. Um, it's uh, so we just have Taco to Paco, um, and yeah, so we just have just the one now. Um, it just wasn't converting. What, what, but was it a seasonal truck, or was it was it a season? That... It was a seasonal truck, and we felt like for us to to do what we wanted to do with Taco to Paco again, we needed to focus. Put full you throttle. Know, imagine that, and that, and act. To be honest with you. I like I've gotten to where I kind of dislike the title of serial entrepreneur because really you're going to find very few serial entrepreneurs that are doing well really just means somebody that is probably like ADD and has a million different ventures that none of them are doing anything. Richard Branson, well, not Richard Branson, but Richard right. Branson, <laughs> Richard Branson's got it right. He's doing okay. Yeah. He did one thing well That's and off. then added to it right i made the mistake of doing multiple things at once and okay well let's spread it all out well i, I should have stuck with one got it really well focused, and then moved laser on. focused and i made the mistake of getting you know having this free time in the off season and then launching a business right. not thinking about the fact that okay well when it gets to my busy time again i'm going to now have two businesses so uh, it, it's, so is it balanced now, or are you trying to find a way to focus more on the I, I'm, college industry? I'm looking. I would. I'm looking to to divest and dive solely into college district. I would love nothing more than to just spend my time on college district, which is essentially what I do now. But um, there's a lot to be said for focus. You know, I, it makes me cringe when people come up to me, um, like I'll go speak at LSU and hear students talk or people that just graduate and they're like, oh, I want to be like you, man. I want to have like a bunch of like, a, you know, multiple businesses and, and kind of several things going. I'm like, man, that's a recipe for disaster. You know, people just, that do it right, right, the people that are doing that, like look at, they're, they're usually older, have had a hit, leverage that success into doing and have no, the staff none of and the manpower them, to say, here's my idea. Right. You none of them it. started from zero and then blew up with four different businesses. Right. Like, they started with one, focused. We're grinding it out, made that work, and then took it to the next one. Yeah, and I can see, and I, and I hear this just by talking to, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs. I hear this time over and time over, you know. There's a simplicity of just focusing on one thing and putting a lot of your effort into that. And I, I can kind of relate to see how it, it can be distracting and exciting. You know, you have an idea, you're excited, things are going, you're inspiring people. You know, people, hardworking people are giving you their dollar for your idea. Right. That's cool. And you, it's almost like a high you get off on that. So you start, me, I mean, I have a black book full of ideas that I, I want to try. And that's kind of where, where this started from. So it's now, you just need to step back see what's working and just completely focus on that before you become too scattered brain. And it's, and it's tough. I mean, in the beginning when it's small, you're not making any money and, um, you're like, well, let me, let me also do this and kind of supplement that. And it, 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 I think you just have to be, I'm not saying it can't be done, but you have to like, people have to be careful when they're looking, you know, when they're admiring and looking from afar, like, Oh, look at shark tank. Like, you know, look at Mark, Mark Cuban and, and Damon John and like they're investing in multiple companies and and look at all the things they're doing like I want to do that like I want to be able to be a part of they like, have a, like small a team part. of a hundred people they're that also help them billionaires right like let's figure out the differences between you and them one a big B mm. <laughs> you're probably not a billionaire otherwise you could be doing those things so it's it you know they started, you know, read Mark's story, read Damon's story. Like they started with something, they worked their asses off to build it up and be big and then leverage that. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, th there's a lot to be said for focus. Do the work. And you clarity have to... of, of purpose. Mm -hmm. You have to do the work. So real quick too, uh, with, the, uh, with the co-working station, you were the first one to kind of spot that trend in Baton Rouge. What, uh, 
and I know we're kind of going back to <laughs> not focusing, but what what was the idea behind that? How did you well, find a way? Well, we the, I, I think on the food trucks and the co-working space, both of them. That's real estate, so that in the way that could, in, well, it's, it's more of an investment than a company. Yeah, right? but it's, a, the thing is, is um, spotting trends, there's a difference between spotting trends and spotting trends where you are. So food trucks notice that that was happening globally and, and, and I guess more nationally um, and a cool thing that was happening. Let's bring it here. There's only so much that can be said for, oh, hey, we're the first. Like, that's cool to say, but it's a lot cooler to be like, hey, we're the, la you know, we're, we're the, the best or right. we're the biggest. And so um, being the first isn't always the best, especially when it's in a new market because like on the it's say, scary. food trucks, for example, not only are we, we're having to work double time. Not only are we working to educate people about our business, we were educating people about an industry. Like we had to educate people that that truck out there that's painted a funny color isn't some crazy delivery truck. That's a place where you can get lunch, mm. you know? And then that's a place that you should try and go spend your money there. Like a lot of people, I'm not buying my food off the street. That, right. you know? There's all kinds of negative connotation so around that. So the concept that. wasn't there at the beginning. And so, so, so well, the, 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 public's perception their concept of it wasn't there and so we knew what we wanted to do but that didn't mean the customers were ready for where we were and so um and and so with the co-working space it was very similar of like you know it, it was interesting i've been to several co-working spaces around the country and um you know probably the best example is i went to new york and, and we're visiting some friends and i was asking about the setup and it's like so they were in a room that was probably two or 3,000 square feet. There were 75 people in this room. There were tons of people in the room. Everybody's at their desk, and it's just buzzing. Like, it was a great environment, mm -hmm. good energy. Um, and so I asked the guy, it was him and probably three or four other people, and I said, what's your setup? Like, is this a, like, is this your dedicated desk, or is this a private work? So, like, what's this considered? And he's like, this is, this is considered a private workspace. And this private workspace was two desks with four people sitting at it amongst, you know, 30 desks right. and 75 people, Jeez. and they considered that private, okay? Now, here in Baton Rouge, because our it's, private it's, offices went like that. If we had nothing but private offices, it, it, it would be slam-packed from day one, but th we've got the desks that are out in the open. Like, that's your desk. Nobody else is going to sit at that desk, but a lot of people... Have, have in the beginning it's come along it's not this way as much anymore but people were reluctant to like wait a minute i don't have walls i don't like i'm, yeah. I'm not going to take a phone call or how is this going to be private or you know that but you can step thing. into like a private conference room well or yeah like that. but the thing is like people are working weird. out of coffee shops all the time and so yeah so it's it, kind of like the same just this nature of what people expect or, or will accept and do here was different in these other places. So you got to be careful when you're like, hey, this works. It's not always going to work here. There. You know, like, I, it's like, I had a friend one time was like, oh, I want to open this oxygen bar. Like, I've seen it in, uh, in Las Vegas, and, like, I think it's a great concept. And, and this time, he was wanting to do this in, a, in my hometown. It's like, no, it works in Las Vegas. It's not going to work in Hattiesburg, bar. Mississippi. Is, it, is that, like, the concept that I've heard of, it's almost like this little thing that you lay down into and it's, it's shut you up. Well, this is like you're dark. taking, like you're, you're getting like an fresh, old lady oxygen, mask. fresh oxygen. And I don't know what the purpose is, but the, but you see it in bigger cities where it's, that was a lot more pollution. Like you don't have right. fresh air. It's, oh, okay. Like you've okay. got high density. There's a lot of people. So people are paying to for a fresh small air. Place. So it's like, Hey, this is really cool, but you, it's really cool in this really big, really cool city. You can't bring it to this small place and expect it to work the same. So you, you, you've got to be realistic and, and see it like in spotting these trends and, and see this. So that's something I've definitely learned of like, you may be ready, but are the customers ready? Right. You know? Are the customers there yet? Like think about how many times you've heard, I can't think offhand, but I know I've read this many times where like somebody came up with something and it wasn't the right time, and then somebody else came up with it a little bit later, and it kind of tweaked it, and oh. boom, 
Yeah. And that, that was it. Like, look at MySpace to Facebook. You right. Know? Like, very the iPhone to Blackberry, similar there's many... concepts. Yeah. But they just, you know, people weren't there yet. Yeah, and, and I, as a matter of fact, it's funny you brought that up. I looked at my face yesterday. I don't know what brought me to it. I say my face. I think you did, but that, maybe that's <laughs> maybe, the next Maybe that's one. the next that's thing, the right. Next one. I looked at MySpace the other day, and I didn't even recognize They've it. They completely changed I, I, it. I, yeah, I was like, wow, yeah. they, they've just completely, you know, they are. They they, they, they now. Right, they had their medium, and they were dominating that, and they were crushing it. And then it's like they just kind of relaxed, and then Facebook came along, and they ignored them, thinking that they were the number one. And then now, if you look at it, theirs looks a lot like Facebook, like almost like a cookie cutter. It's, yeah. it's crazy, but it's just not working. Um, so tell me, man, uh, what do you like to do outside the office, outside the food truck when you get out? What, is, what does Jerry like to do for fun? Uh, for fun, I have all kinds of things that I'm interested in. I'm, I'm, I got to keep it in check so I don't get out of focus, you know? Like, yeah. um, for a while, I was making beer. Uh, I enjoy I enjoy creative like creation. Type you want a beer stuff. fest in two weeks? Um, Zaps. I, I am not. I, well, in two weeks. No, it's not this I'm not, weekend, but the I'm next. In, I'm, I don't think I'm be in town. I've missed that the past couple of years. Um, it was good last year. I um, after the first you know few beers, everything. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. Um, so I enjoy making beer. I haven't had the time to do that because it, it's about a day long process. Because when I would do it, I'd like fr- like start from grain. Go all the way through, keg it, everything. I've, and you got to wait. All, all of my stuff is in the back, and so um, um, I just, I, I, we just had a baby, uh, my wife and I. So we've got a four-month-old son. Thank you. And um, so I enjoy spending time with him, and that's kind of where it goes. That and spending time with my friends. Uh, we, uh, I've got some uh, buddies that I get together. We'll play some board games. There's a game called a choir. Oh. Um, we play some ping pong. Um, I haven't played as much ping pong lately. Um, um, if you look at our ping pong playing versus like us getting stuff done, if if we're playing ping pong, we're probably not getting stuff done. There's like a correlation there. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, uh, there's this game I've always liked Monopoly, but there's this thing there's this game called Acquire that I've recently um, found out about. A friend of mine, Brian Rodriguez at Gatorworks, uh, introduced me to it. And I get together with some guys. We'll play that. Not regularly, but... Um, Sounds interesting. Is it like Monopoly, but for startups? It's uh, it's this game where you, you create companies, and then you like expand the companies, and then you take over companies based on the size it's a board of your game, company. Right? It's a board game, yeah. Without seeing it, it's kind of hard to explain, but... Um, I like it because it has a definitive end, unlike Monopoly. You know, Monopoly can just drag on forever. forever. It's really hard to make somebody go bankrupt and... Um, so anyway, it uh, acquire it has like a, a finite uh, life to it, then, and so I like that. Um, yeah, man, I just I, I I right now I'm I'm trying to focus on the business and family, and so and I enjoy I enjoy my work and I enjoy my family. So that's that's kind of what yeah. I do outside of of work at at the moment. That's great. And now that you have that leverage to. Now that you're not have all these food trucks, ten different food trucks, whatever, you know, you're scaling back, focusing on what's important, which is going to give you the time to do those, uh, right. you know, be there for your family. Right. So that's that's a great thing. Uh, and one last thing to, uh, well, second last thing I wanted to ask you is, what's a book, a song, and a quote you love? Um, uh, book. My gut. I'm one of those guys that's like always reading like five books at one time. Yeah, I do the same thing. Just sometimes I'll just open Very, up in the middle and start yeah, reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of "Crush It" by Gary Vaynerchuk. All right. Um, I've 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 actually gotten the chance to talk to Gary a couple times and um, and get to know him a little bit over the past few years. I really like what he has to say. I think he's a pretty genuine, authentic guy. Real quick too, I, I really like that book. I just started reading the first two pages in uh-huh. the library and I finished the whole thing. I brought it home, I checked out, finished the whole thing. I was emailing the guy. Well, you, he, he puts his email address he in does. the book. <laughs> it, what, what you need to do, if you've read the book, Great book, you need to re-listen to it, listen to it on audio because it's him reading it there and it goes off script. Um, and it's just a, okay. it, it's a, I feel like it's a whole different perspective of it. Um, there's a, there's another book called that I'm in the middle of. I'm kind of like picking up and putting down because it's not something you have to read all the way through, but it's called The War of Art, mm-hmm. not the Art of War, but The War of Art. 
and it's just talking about anybody in the creative space, whether you're um, painting or you're like you're an artist or you're a chef or you're creating a business. It just talks about that creation process and how people face resistance and how you have to push through that resistance. And there's always going to be things that are like, hey, what well, you know, I know you've got a lot of work to do. But why don't you do this or why don't like it's that's kind of helped me in this like trying to stay focused you know not keeps you on track if you don't watch out you're gonna have meetings all day long and you're not gonna get anything done and it's like put like pushing like at the beginning of the week i looked at my schedule and saw that like almost the entire week was free and it was just like oh my gosh this is so yeah. great like i don't i very rarely have that and um and i don't know how i made that happen this week but things start to slip in there if you don't watch out but when you just have time to work, do the work. Just do the work. Mm -hmm. Do what you do. You know? Um, sometimes it's really as simple as that. Like, we, we want, I've found, I, I've noticed myself, like, looking for that big thing, that, that complicated thing, that, you know, super strategy, like, how do we make this work thing. And I've found that, really, it's just a lot of small things that I just need to do regularly, consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every, every Monday. You do this. To, yeah, right. You know? I, I'm starting to find that routine. And one thing I, I kind of like, too, well, Tuesdays are do-cast days. Uh, so yeah, I, I start doing that, you know. Uh, mon well, I have the majority as my focus. And I find the same thing, like, you know, the reason why I called it Hanley's Foods is because I wanted to venture off into many other food lines, right. salad dressing being my gateway into the industry. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I realized very quickly, you know, I need to focus on what I have. I can't start expanding my line until I beef up this production. Right. So the majority of my days consists of that. But these projects, I, I have a designated day. Yeah. You know, three hours aside, on that day I do this. Well, I and, have to. I mean, I, and that was the only way I got, again, I am trying to get out of having multiple businesses that go all the time. But when I, when I was in the middle of it, you had an email address for each one. So I had Jared at College District, Jared at right. Think EHQ, at Food Truck, at Social Awkward, all that stuff. Um, and the thing is, um, you know, I would, I would just not check certain email addresses. Like, I, like this is what, what I'm going to work on now. I mean, I've got stuff now that, um, you know, things that are like extracurricular outside, whether they're community or, or they're not college district that you know you have certain people that email you uh pertaining to that stuff i've got filters in gmail now to where when those people send emails or it's a particular subject it bypasses my inbox and goes straight into that folder yeah and when i determine the time right. this is kind of four hour work week stuff mm -hmm. but when i determine that i have the time to look at that that's when i look at it because i was finding myself like going through my email and then that would come in and I'd open it and then I'd get frustrated or be like, but then you fix mentally, it. Right. It, then if you don't fix it, it's mentally in your head the rest Ex of the day. Exactly. And so, so now I don't even know it. it. Like I'm blissfully ignorant that that stuff is happening. I started to learn that. I, I don't do the process with the Gmail, but I have the things where I have the emails per every business and I would just only zoom in on one thing. I won't check the others. Or if I do, it would be more like a river. I would not check them, just scan through them. But yeah, right. I have that thing where if I would, I would see a fire it would be in my head all day, and I can't, can't be as focused as I can. Yeah, it's hard to know that that fire's happening and, and not, like, Do go something. address it. Right. So now it's just like the fire's happening, but nobody's told me. It's great. <laughs> yeah, Usually I, I find out that Someone not, else will put it out. It's not that big of a deal. Right. The, your complete life, then it stops. Oh, it's liberating. Right. That's I love nothing more than to open that particular folder and see all of these emails that I haven't looked at. And, and then, like, at the very last one, two days later, someone solved it. Yeah. That's it's, great. Yeah. That's when you have a good system in place. So, yeah, that was, that was a book. <laughs> okay, so that was a book. Uh, it's a song and a, song. a quote you love. You know what? I think I'm I listening know to a lot of Stevie Wonder right now. Okay. Um, I'm a huge Ben Harper fan. Um, if I had to pick one song, sheesh. All right, that's good. Uh, you know, an artist, I guess. Well, Ben Harper, huge fan. He's got the song with my own two hands. Um, it just talks about I can change the world with my own two hands. Um, let, let's go with that. That's I'm, nice. such, I'm a huge Ben Harper fan. Right. All right, and a quote. Quote. Oh, man, there's so many great quotes out there. Um, I'm only going to bring this. I'm going to butcher it, but I'm, I'm going to bring it up. Just I heard it on... Uh, I'm a big fan of Oprah. I'm not afraid to admit it. There you go. I mean, she's a powerful woman. She does good things. Um but the other day, 
Uh, and she's got some great content with like Masterclass and Soulful Sundays, uh, Super Soul Sundays. Anyway, uh, it was the, uh, is it the Teddy Roosevelt quote about the man in the arena and talking about, you know, it's basically going back to there's always going to be haters. But it, 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 but it's, it, it's, it's along the lines of, you know, it's the man that's in the arena that's fighting the fight, that's doing the work. You know, if they whether they fail or not, they they were out there trying, and 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 basically, kind of shake them haters off. Of you know, there's going to be people that ridicule and 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 criticize and say they can do it better or you should have done this, but they're usually the people that are on the periphery. They're not the they're not the person in the arena fighting the fight. And so when you can recognize that, of like. Why am I listening to this person that's not out here? Just this noise. Fighting. Then I, I think that allows you to shed a lot of the weight and 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 be clear on kind of you know because this whole entrepreneur thing is tough. Right. It's difficult, and you've got to surround yourself with good people, whether they work for you or not. But you have to have a support system. You have to have people that'll that will tell you like it is, but also uh, encourage you along the way. Um, and you can't, like you said, it's put in the work too. Sometimes. Right. Well, you, well, you, and you just can't let yourself get, get taken off course by, by people that are, oh, well you should do this or, ah, this label's not that great or kind of what we were talking about later. You should definitely not do glass. You should do plastic or, you know, what about this top right here? And, um, you, it's like, look, man, I've, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody right. is out there. And so, you know, um, uh, yeah. You gotta shake them haters off. <laughs> you do. Yeah. You, it's so simple, but you do. I, and so again, I just paraphrase Teddy Roosevelt by saying "shake them haters off." But it's a. Uh, I did not know that came from Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, it did. That Actually, was like people, some people, people hashtag mystical... shake them haters. Huh. Yeah. That's he great. he was on it way before all these uh, all these other hip hop artists and and other folks. But whatever. Um, that's pretty cool. I like that. Shake them haters off. So, uh, what's next for you, man? Where's where and where's a good place for people to find you? Uh, you can find me online in so many different ways, probably more ways than I should have on there. Uh, I mean, I'm on Twitter at Jared Loftus and um, um, about about dot me backslash Jared Loftus is a good way to email me. You can email me through that. Um, what's next? I have uh, I've got a few things I'm churning on. I've got any teasers. Nah, I've gotten to the point now to where like my my wife's always giving me a hard time. She's like, "You're way too open. You talk too much." And I've I'm found the same problem. I've found that uh, I'm better off just do the work, do the work, and whatever's next you'll see. And if you don't see it, that means I wasn't doing my work, and uh, it didn't matter. So uh, I don't want to be one of those guys that's always talking about something and never doing it. And so um, I have a few things that I'd like to. To make happen, um, but really, I'm, I'm focusing on this. This is what's next. <laughs> College district. College district. Right. It, Just it has the potential brand. to be so much bigger. Um, has the potential to be really big, and and I want to focus on this and and make it that way. Right. I'm looking behind you. It's uh, Forbes. Was it college? I remember the line, but I can't see it. College. college football's biggest entrepreneur. Right, that's a great title to have, man. So it was, but you know, that's a. Uh, I love the fine folks at Forbes, and I appreciate the uh, the the exposure. Um, but that is um, that's one lesson that I've learned is is people like are oh man, you were in Forbes, like you had this whole write up in Forbes, and I saw you on this, or our food truck was on the on the food channel or the cooking channel and we've had national exposure and people like get caught up in the exposure and the press and, and this stuff. Um, at the end of the day, like that, this didn't cash any, like I can't cash that at the bank. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. that article doesn't, like I can, hey, you know, I was mentioning Forbes as college football's biggest entrepreneur. Uh, it is great exposure, but I haven't, I didn't get any investment. I didn't. I didn't get any more investment in my it's company. Just a little because bit of that. icing on the cake. I didn't. Uh, I didn't sell that many more. There was a link in that article that I could track. I think we may have sold a couple hundred bucks in t-shirts off of that article. Uh, so it's like, don't get caught up in your own hype. It's a big thing. 
Right. You know? I mean, don't... Uh, you could... Do your Forbes work. could come around and easily be like, Baton Rouge's biggest salad dressing entrepreneur. And if it doesn't sell any more salad dressing, like, I mean, yeah. it's cool. But did it... Did it... Like, what's the goal here? Is your goal to be in Forbes? Or is your goal to sell a lot exactly. of salad dressing and make some money? Yeah. And so... It goes back down to like what you said, and to focus and to zero in on what it is that's profitable at the end of the day. Yeah, just be clear. What are your goals here, and and um, and don't get caught up in your, in the, in the hype. That's great. There's a lot of that. That that's there's well a lot done. of it. I bet. Well, man, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Thanks for going the extended link to with me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you can find this interview online as well with topics, quotes, and links at the and uh, we'll select. Is there a giveaway for College District? Maybe we'll select a random person, a commentator. Yeah, let's on... give away some shirts or something. I'm sorry, I, that you asked me to put that, and we'll 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 figure something out. Yeah, we'll figure something out. So some random commenter uh, will randomly select them to be uh, get a T-shirt from College District, a wonderful T-shirt. So uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe to the Ducast on iTunes, and please leave a five-star review. This is Richard and Jared signing out. Do it big.